I'm going to go ahead and uh, start off with uh, the prayer. I'll go ahead and get into the prayer. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, I'm thankful to be in front of y'all this Sunday. Um, yes. The troubles of today are enough. We don't even know if we have tomorrow. So um, I'm very thankful. Uh, I had a uh, I had a situation this week, or I think it was uh, this week or two weeks ago, and um, there was a lot of trials and tribulations piling up, and uh, I got to a point where I had got low on money. And I haven't seen that in a while. So I was kind of discouraged and just looking like what's going on. And um, I was in I was in a, a grocery store and I seen the back of this guy's shirt and uh, it said uh, uh, Jose, Jose one through nine, but um, it in that was in, it was in Spanish. So in English it was Joshua one through nine. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now, I thought about that and it gave me encouragement, but one thing I thought about is, um, you know, where do we go from here? A lot of places we think, where do we go from here? What do we do? What's the next step? Because you have to make your next move your best move. Um, but I'm big on phrases, and one thing that popped up in my head is um, some people I would call naysayers. They'll say, uh, and if you've heard somebody say this, I would like you to raise your hand. Um, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> so I'm not alone. Yeah. I, um, I don't like that. I really don't like that saying. Um, <laughs> For real, because I feel like it's a perception and a feeling that comes with it. Um, I've heard it from people that aren't necessarily believers like I am, you know. So sometimes it kind of feels like you're perceiving it as though, like, God is just sitting back waiting for you to make a plan so you can laugh. Like, that's funny to God, but I don't think that's really funny. The feeling makes you feel like God really doesn't care about what you've got going on or who you really are or what you plan on doing and I don't like that either because uh, God desires people's salvation more than their damnation but a lot of people wouldn't understand that with certain things put in front of them especially when you're talking about we're supposed to have trials and tribulations and some people think that, well, if God is so good, we shouldn't be having trials and tribulations, but those trials and tribulations are to try us to be better. God loves who we are, but he'll never stop trying to make us better. So I have three um, points for the naysayers. Um, would be to trust God, tell God, and try God. And even for us, because sometimes... We know that we believe God, we know that we can trust God, but it doesn't look the way that we need it to look, so it feels discouraging. It's hard to not feel that feeling. My first point, I would, I would like people to trust God because the, uh, God has been about his word since day one. We are the workmanship of his hands, of course. He cares a lot about us. But if you look in Joshua, nobody had to tell God to bless them with any land or anything like that. This was a promise, a covenant that was already made with forefathers that was, um, it was uh, executed. Which means that God is a, a one, of, one of his word. And we know that with the Messiah that came. 
But some didn't understand that the promised land was a gift, right? That had to be possessed by military means. Have you ever had a birthday gift you had to fight for? No. Like an anniversary gift you had to throw down for? No. Well, this is a gift that we have to subdue by military means and not necessarily by hurting uh, uh, your neighbor, but it definitely means going against the enemy, getting in the battlefield, uh, bringing your sword. That, that takes a lot. It takes, it takes a lot of courage. Um, sometimes the battle doesn't look like you can win it, but in, in Joshua, he, he, let, he let him know that one man will chase down a thousand. Now, that sounds crazy to a lot of people, but with, with my God, anything is possible. All things are possible. So, jo uh, one thing is, Joshua was trusted to carry out a human task to accomplish a spiritual goal. I feel like a lot of us are in, in, in the place that would be where we're, we have a gift that we need to possess, and it may be military tactics we might have to use, not necessarily breaking arms and snapping backs, uh, snapping necks and breaking backs, but we may have to uh, hurt some feelings. We may have to get in the field. We may have to get up on somebody. Hey, man, that's not what you want to do. You know, we we, we better than that. You know, you that takes courage. It takes getting in the field, but it does take trusting God because. You can, you can do something all day and not know what's going to happen, right? We could, we could praise God all day and not know that at the end we're going to be in heaven because at the end of the day, one thing that a lot of us agree on is that nobody has come back except for Jesus and a lot of people don't agree on Jesus, so we'll just stay uh, grounded real quick. One thing that we can all agree on is that Nobody except for Jesus has come back from the dead to tell us what it was like. And we can speculate. Some people have said that they have, but it's like it's not been apparent. We've not seen them die. You know, people saw Jesus die. Then they saw him resurrected. So we don't we can leave that out. That's the he told us the truth. Now, if we want to believe it or not, that's that's on us. But nobody else has the no the 100% the knowledge like, yeah, no, if you die, man, if you didn't do what you were supposed to do, you're going to go to this place and you're going to have to take a right when you get to the gate. They're not going to give you those details. They haven't been there yet. So, when it comes down to trusting God, I know that he's one that we can trust. I say tell God because even Jesus to his disciples in Matthew 7, 7 said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall, shall be opened unto you. So, of course, we can ask for forgiveness. We can ask for grace. But some people don't even think to stop to uh, realize that we can ask for rent money. We can ask for food for someone else or for us. We can, we can ask for gas in the car. We can ask for our next breath, because sometimes... Those sinuses might have you feeling like you're about to die. <laughs> um, but in Joshua, in uh, Joshua 10, 12, then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gideon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Joshua 10, 13, And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that, before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. I feel like 
some people just overlook certain things that are in the Bible because that's showing that he spoke to God about the sun and the moon and God paused the sun and the moon and I haven't seen the sun and the moon pause since all, in all my 32 years of living on this earth. I've never seen the sun just stay there and the moon stay there for a whole day. I've seen the sun be in the sky and the moon be in the sky, but it isn't the whole day. And it's like you catching you like, wait, did that happen? And then by the time you look back and you really thought about it, it's gone. It's not the same. But this is a situation where something that a lot of us could think to ask but wouldn't think would be possible got asked and got done got requested and got done and it's not just because of uh, good looks or anything like that it's definitely a lot of obedience of course it's obedience but God loves us He when I said that God desires people's salvation more than their damnation. That's very true. And some people feel the opposite. And that's where you get phrases like, oh, well, you tell God your plans and he'll laugh. Like, it doesn't really make any sense if you know God. And that's what we're really talking about, knowing God. Knowing who we're going to. So, the last, I'll say, is a try God. Because we know that we can trust God. We know that we can tell God all day. But to try God, and I'm not saying test God. I'm not saying in, in a, in a uh, malice way, with no malice. I mean to try God. Try it. Joshua 24, 14 said, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods, lowercase g, gods, which your fathers served on, this, on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which you, your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I'm choosing to try God. We, we, we have to choose to try God every day. And when, and when you choose to try God, I would, I would employ everybody to just be genuine. Because... The fact of the matter is, is God is keeping his promises and always has. Showing you where we're at in Joshua, Deuteronomy 9, 5 says, not for, thy, not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this was, this was already a thing that was going to happen. This was already a thing that God said he's going to be. He's going to give you that land. He's probably already had different provisions for a lot of us in our lives that we didn't know that he already promised us. But at the end of the day, he's already promised us these things, he's, and he's keeping his promises as much as he's kept his promises. Now, in just a second, so that would be in just a second. Sorry, I just got to make sure um, we're in the right book. I need to abbreviations sometimes. Um, I think this would be Malachi. Uh, 
I just like to thank God for everything that he's done, everything that he's doing, and everything that he is going to do.